The Fitzroy Basin is the largest catchment that flows out into the Great Barrier Reef and gully erosion is one of the major erosion processes occurring. So it's very important not only for local water quality but for the water quality that ends up on the Great Barrier Reef and in the lagoon and that we work with landholders to address those erosion processes. The worst of the two of those gullies was that steep. It's gone from being a real raw nasty looking gully to now being a nice smoothed out steady gully and it has been an absolute success. The dam is, is probably twice as big for the, as it needs to be for the catchment that's there but what it means is in a three inch rainfall event we catch every bit of water. Prior to the work it was just a, an embarrassing lunascape. I'm a person that prides my place to keeping grass all over my country. After the work was done it was completely different meaning levelled out and seeded well. It's quite a yeah, different landscape altogether. Our erosion project, it's slowed the water runoff considerably, like having the dirt banks approximately 50 metres apart. The water hasn't, doesn't have the time to, uh, I suppose, run and, you know, and erode as such like it used to. In the gullies where we've uh, rocked the heads of the gullies, put rock in there and uh, we're starting to get a lot more grass starting to appear and established. The one three inch rainfall event was, was very close to the finish of the project. You know, held together remarkably well for what we've done in there. Oh yeah, well we had 100, 100 mil there one day, four inches in one day when the cyclone came across here. Yeah, no, and you'll see that there's, there's no gullies or erosion on it. Uh, we're currently at the top of the, uh, the ridge line or the trial site and it, it goes to the west here and drops down into the main gully system. Um, so the contours are, you know, they're a bit wider apart because it's still fairly flat. But as we drop down, the contours get a lot closer together. We're just standing on the end of the stick rake line here. And there's a dirt contour on the end of this stick rake line. And the idea being it'll catch the water. You could have stood a Land Cruiser in here just behind me on its nose and not found it. We've rehabilitated the head of this gully, made it into a chute. We've steadied up the water and brought all the water back from the sides and brought it in our steady chute here. The bottom of our gully is all grassed up. This is a great site. By holding the water out of the gully, it's healed the whole gully up. Uh, the rake lines are, are feeding the water how it has to and they're gradually silting and turning into a contour bank. Uh, the levee banks are, are holding the water, which is keeping moisture in them and they're, they're beautifully grassed up. This was a bloody piece of country that you're sort of half ashamed of, but there's a hell of a lot of grass starting to come through it. Makes you feel that you're doing your little bit towards the environment, gee. I'm very impressed with the results. I really like the concept that John brought uh, to Eatonvale. Um, it, yeah, I think it works really well. Ecstatic. It's great to ride out there, look around, and everything be nice and smooth. There's, there's no cliff edges everywhere and <laughs> roared out, you know, down to rock and that sort of thing. It's, it's now growing and it's productive and, and, and you can really see the difference. We're not running dirt down the, down the Cockatoo Creek anymore and um, it's holding water in the ground and growing grass for it. If you can utilise a piece of country that's absolutely of zero benefit on your place, that you can have some financial return. But it's not only that, it's your self-pride that you can say, well, I've, I've done that. My motto in life is to leave this place will be in a better economic and better environmental state than when I came here. They were big projects and they're probably not something that uh, small-time graziers can afford a lot of the time. but start doing those little things that are going to help you financially they will help you they'll spread your water they'll keep your cattle down out of there they'll give them more grass availability further out in paddocks and if you can just start there and then work your way through the country will heal and it will help getting the support and the financial support from FBA has um, has enabled us to to undergo these sort of projects instead of putting them off until we can financially do something ourselves. It was an area that we feel we, we needed to do something, but financially it was a bit tough. So, yeah, having that support from the FBI was, was exactly what we needed, Jay. To be involved with FBI, they're very helpful. And they give you pretty good time frames to work on your projects. The future is there. 
and they're trying to help you to sustain a sustainable agriculture industry. I think the project's been a huge success in the fact that we're seeing great on-ground improvements and the landholders are demonstrating that they've taken on board what was shown to them. They really are passionate about what they've done.